This thing's stuck. Thanks. It's been barricaded. These folks don't like people just dropping in uninvited. Uh, I don't think that I will be very well received. Malka? Yes, Kate? My friend Hans is very sick. He needs taking care of. Oh, otherwise he's going to die, isn't he? Like Mama. I don't know. He wants to get to the end of his journey so badly. Sometimes that is not enough, Kate. Since he was really young, Hans has dreamed of a land called Siberia. Siberia doesn't exist. It's just a story they tell kids to make them sleep. And I'm no kid anymore. I believe the story, though, Malka. So, you're going to have to help your friend, Kate. Tell me, do you know anyone who could help heal my friend Hans? Zirkos has special tonics in his bar. No, I need a real doctor. Then you'll have to go to the monastery. I suppose there are monks at the monastery. That's right. Monks with big black robes. They're really creepy. There's nothing to be afraid of. As monks, they must be good men. And you tell me they can treat Hans? The Patriarch is a stern old man. He won't treat your friend if you don't follow the monastery rules. How do you know that, Malka? He wouldn't look after Mama straight away. Because of the rules. That's why she's dead. I'm sorry, Malka.
Mr. Sirkos? What can I do for you, miss? Tell me, Mr. Sirkos. It was you who took in that little girl Malka into your care, wasn't it? I just couldn't bear to leave a little girl like that. What happened to her mother? Oh, a gypsy woman fleeing God knows what monkey business. She got here half dead and crazed with fever. The monks helped her, isn't that right? Uh, you could say that. When they stopped being high and mighty, they took her up to their monastery for treatment. But it was far too late for the poor girl. Them old crows make up their own rules. They'd leave a man to rot rather than get their habits dirty. I don't like him one bit, Miss Walker. What rules are you talking about? It's a phony old custom. To decide whether a dying man is actually dying at all, the patriarch of the monastery looks at the patient's face before deciding yay or nay. But how? I don't understand. They kind of make this print of the face on a piece of cloth, you know, like the Shroud of Jesus in the Bible. I must confess I don't really understand this Shroud story. You'll see, just outside the village, the monks have put this kind of iron box. A box containing a pile of linen sheets. When you put one of these sheets over the face of the sick man, it has the curious property of soaking up all his sweat and juices. So effective it is that all the features of his face can be seen on the cloth. And so the old patriarch looks to this print to form his diagnosis? At least what he can judge is whether that face on the shroud is sick enough to get dragged up those rocks to the monastery and be treated by him. I suppose anybody can take a cloth from the crate if he needs it? You suppose wrong, Miss Walker. One person has charge of the distribution of the said shrouds, and that's Malka. She sure is proud of her position. The Patriarch himself gave her the responsibility, and that kid ain't giving it up for no man, believe me. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker, and good luck. Mighty kind, Mr. Sirkos. Tell me, how is it going? He told me why they couldn't treat her at the monastery. Yes, Kate. Sometimes, people get too sick and there's nothing that can be done. Is your friend too sick? I hope he isn't. I'm going to help you, Kate. Can you help me, Malka? Hmm. Only if your friend is a little bit sick. Not too much or you'll be sad. We'll see. Let's give it a try, you know? Like for your mother, with the monks. On the road to the monastery, there's a kind of box with sheets. The monks call them shrouds. I'm going to give you a token so you can get one. It's very important, Kate Walker. Then what do I do with this shroud? Take it and lay it over your friend's face. <sighs> okay, I'll give it a try. Thank you for your help. Come back and see me. I like you, Kate.
Excuse me. I'm sorry to disturb you, uh, sir? Blessed art thou, my sister. What can I do for you? Um, my name is Kate Walker, and my train is currently at the station in Romansburg. Oh, oh, Romansburg. Pretty town, but not the kind of town for pretty strangers. Pretty, solitary strangers. <laughs> I don't intend to hang around long, brother. I'm traveling with an old man, Hans Vorlberg, and... <laughs> Vorlberg? Did you say Vorlberg, my sister? You know him? No, <laughs> but I know someone else. <sighs> ah, can you hear? It is the sweet song of the Merula Alba. If only I could catch a glimpse. Such a rare, pretty bird. Few are they who say in truth they have spied her beauty. <laughs> It is probably seeking some other Merula Alba. My friend is very ill, you know. It is God's will! God's will! <laughs> what can I do, my sister? What can I do? Maybe you could visit him at his bedside. Oh, 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 never, my sister, never! I would incur the wrath of our Lord and Patriarch. <laughs> I'm looking for someone with a medical background. Someone who can tend to the sick. Our Patriarch is a remarkable doctor, my sister. He cures bodies as well as souls. <laughs> you couldn't help me, could you please? I am but a simple monk. You have to go see our Patriarch yonder, in the monastery. You say that I could find someone to help me, up there at the monastery? Yes, at the monastery, oh yes. <laughs> I rang at the monastery, but there was no reply. Maybe they don't want to let me in. Can you tell me, is there another way in? There is no other way, my sister. <laughs> Why won't they let me into the monastery? Dura Lex, said Lex. <laughs> I'm sorry? The law is hard, but it is the law, my sister. <laughs> what law? I don't like questions, my sister. The law is the law is the law. I must absolutely find a doctor for my friend. I just do the laundry, my sister, that is all. Down here, there are some doctors, and others do the laundry. You are going to make me late. you hear? It is the Merula Alba again. Why won't you help me? I must finish my chores before even song, my sister. You live in the monastery, I suppose. That is right, my sister. <laughs> Are there many of you up there? A few old monks. <laughs> few are those who heed the calling in this age. Tell me, what have we got to do to get into the monastery? You must pull the rope that rings the bell, my sister, but not too hard, or you will scare the birds. Don't scare them. A monk will show you in. Thank you. Um, I rang the bell, but the monk at the door doesn't seem to want to show me in. There are rules. Rules and traditions to respect here. Respect. <laughs> What rules? What traditions? That some people are less worthy than others. Okay. So how does that monk up there make an opinion about my worthiness by just looking at me? It, it is... it is not a question to ask, my sister. You're telling me that I'm not worthy to enter your monastery? I didn't say. No. I just... I just wash dirty laundry, that's all. <laughs> yes, you did say that. You implied I wasn't worthy. Femina inconcessus. <laughs> I don't understand Latin. Latin, like the birds. Erythacus rubicula, picus viridis, 
Merula Alba. You speak Latin, then? Oh, monk's Latin. Pigeon Latin. Hmm. You seem to know the Latin names of birds. <laughs> pretty birds. Pretty birds. Picus viridis? Woodpecker. How about Arithacus rubicula? Robin red breast. And Merula alba? White raven, my sister. Femina inconsusus? Women. Forbidden. <laughs> uh, no. Right. I get it. Because I'm a woman, I'm forbidden access to the monastery. And now I understand. That's the rule, sister. I can't change the rules. Of course, brother. Women are the source of all sin. Isn't that so? What is a Marula Alba? A rare bird. <laughs> it can never be seen as it is as white as snow. They say that when a man sees it, his mind clears and his intelligence grows and grows. There seem to be a lot of birds around here. Yes, yes, but the only one that interests me is the Merula Alba. I'm going now. I'll be back soon. What? Tell me, how is it going? Hi, Mr. Sirkos. What can I do for you, miss?
How's it going? Father, Hans doesn't want to stay in the attic anymore. What happened? It's not his fault. Hans's mammoth doll. It's a little chilly to be taking a shower. Thanks all the same. Hi there, Oscar. Good day to you, Kate Walker. Oscar, I know where to get help for Mr. Varlberg. Where, Kate Walker? At the monastery, up there, at the top of that rocky crag. So, Kate Walker? What are you waiting for? Why are you still here? Oscar, I... We have already wasted enough time, Kate Walker. I will tend to Mr. Varlberg during your absence. I'm going to the monastery to seek help, Oscar. Oh, please, Kate Walker, do be quick. Oscar, I admit that gloomy monastery does give me the creeps. Do you think you could go with me? I'd feel much better. And Mr. Vorlberg, who will take care of him? Did you think of that, Kate Walker? Yeah, yeah, of course. See you later, Oscar. I'll be back soon. Okay, Kate Walker. Colonel? Ah, Miss Walker. Colonel, you don't have one of those whistles for making bird noises among your many treasures here, do you? A bird call? Why, I sell them by the truckload during the hunting season. I've got a whole collection of them. I think I've got just what you need somewhere. Aha! Our route is still long, and my friend is suffering. I don't know what to do. Siberia is hellish cold at this time of year, Miss Walker. And journeys take an age. Your friend isn't in the prime of youth anymore. Thanks for all your help, Colonel. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker.
returning it? Ever? Okay, no. Can you hear? Can you hear? The Merula Alba. It is calling to me. Calling to me. Um, good evening, sir. This is really amazing work all whiling away those celibate hours. This is really amazing work all whiling away those celibate hours. Hello? Anybody there? Uh, excuse me. What? A woman? Women are expressly prohibited. What the devil are you doing here, woman? My name's Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer from New York. Excuse me, but I absolutely must speak to you, and your monks wouldn't let me in. Miss Walker, your female presence in this dwelling of monastic retreat is unwelcome. It is very... troubling. Please leave quickly. 
Please forgive my slightly cavalier methods to get to see you, Father. But my cause is just, I assure you. I have no need of assurance, my girl. Remember, you are here beneath the gaze of the Almighty. I have a friend who is really sick. In the village, I was told that- We must all brave the ordeals the Lord sends us, my child. My friend is named Hans Varlberg. He has devoted his life to making fantastic mechanical machines. His automaton soothed the harsh daily labor of the people of his day, and amused them, entertained them. He's a genius inventor, you know. Hmm. An inventor, you say? The inspiration of such people is often cowed to humility before the marvels of God's own creation. I have come to ask the assistance of the priest healer in the monastery. My friend is very unwell, and very old. Sometimes a body weary of life refuses treatment. That is why we here tend to the soul. From what element is your friend suffering? A high fever. It started with a kind of fit. He felt... Sometimes we have to just accept the inevitable, my child, and resign ourselves to the call of time. You don't understand. Maybe Hans is old and frail, but he has but one desire. To continue his journey. We have to learn how to meet our fate, my child. This is God's will. My friend needs treatment. You are the only one for miles around who can give him the care he needs. I need a sign from the Almighty, or else I can do nothing for your friend. I am sorry, Miss Walker. I really need your help, Father. You're our only hope. My girl, I attend only to extreme cases, grave illness and madness. But this is an extreme case, Father. There is a rule, Miss Walker. You must respect it. Bring me the imprint of your friend's suffering. I know what you were telling me. I brought the shroud. Show me, my child. Right. We will go search for your friend. It's our man. He's got something. Canton? I can barely hear you. Mr. Martin. What news have you got? I, I talked to the hotel guys, Mr. Martin. She checked out of Arrowbad last week. Headed off with Hans Vorlberg. How is she? Seems her health is fine, Mr. Martin, but... Uh, what? Her behavior seems... Don't beat about the bush, Canton, please. Look, Mr. Martin, it's like this. I'm afraid that Miss Walker has been acting... Well, how do you say it? Did you sleep well, my child? Yes, yes, thank you. How is Hans? Alas, you brought him to us so late, my child. I fear we cannot do much. We are going to concentrate on tending to his soul. What? What did you say? The man is worn and old. His final hour is upon him. But that's impossible. Your friend is dying. You must believe me, my child. Please take care of Hans, father, please. Torment yourself no longer, my girl. I will tend to the poor soul. Can I see him? No. I do not advise it. Deranged minds are often too addled by evil, and you could become contaminated by its sly malevolence. Look. 
Contagion doesn't bother me. I've got to talk with him, you understand? The rules, Miss Walker. Remember the rules. No one talks to the sick. I just can't abandon Hans like that. I must see him immediately, you hear? Okay. So be it. Your friend is in the last chamber at the end of the corridor. I beseech thee, my girl. Pay no heed to the imprecations of a sick, delirious, dying man. I will wait for you in the chapel when everything is over. For the formalities, you understand. <laughs>